What's up, Night Owl? Steely here back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to reskin your published adventures to fit with the new Theros setting. All of the published adventures take place in the Forgotten Realms, but if you want to use a setting like Ravnica or Eberron or the new one, Theros, you could just make some minor tweaks, and I'll cover those in this video. To start with, we're going to be making Lost Minds of Fandelver a Theros theme adventure. Now, Fandelver is one of my favorite published adventures. It hits all of the right notes, and it's perfect for teaching new players how to play, and it's great for new DMs as well. And just as a warning, there's going to be spoilers for Fandelver in this video. So if you haven't played it yet and you plan on it in the future, look away now. But let's start with the adventure hook. You're in the city of Neverwinter and you're hired by Gundren Rockseeker to escort a caravan to the small town of Fandolin. Gundren has a map in his possession which leads to the long lost mines of Fandelver. So this one's pretty cut and dry. You have an NPC that's hired you from a major city to guard a cart on its way to a smaller city because they found some great location. If you want to theme this like Theros, choose one of the major cities, Akros, Melites, or Setessa, and then one of the smaller cities nearby can be your Fandolin. Once you have that, you just need an NPC who has found some great location to be the ending of your campaign. What you choose as your end location will depend on your big bad evil guy, and I'll go over those in a second. What you need right now is an NPC to hire the adventurers to go to this small town. Some examples could be a centaur or a satyr, maybe a minotaur. That could be dependent on which major city you choose. Chapter 1 of Lost Minds of Fandelver is called Goblin Arrows. In this chapter, the party is ambushed on its way to Fandolin by goblins. Now, Fandolin will be whatever small town you chose on the map, and it can function exactly the same. As far as the goblins, it really depends on how much work you want to put into it. You can make this really easy by using the same stat blocks as everything in the adventure and just changing the name, or just adding the word Nyxborn in front of it. But if you want to add just a little bit more flavor, I would recommend changing the monsters entirely, but kind of keep the same theme going. So for example, those goblins could just as easily be harpies, and you could change Cragmaw Hideout to Cragmaw Ravine, or Cragmaw Gorge, or Cragmaw Canyon. In my opinion, Blood Toll Harpies would be perfect for this first chapter. They're slightly lower CR than goblins, so feel free to add more if you feel you need to. Now, As far as that first dungeon, Cragmaw Hideout, you could easily keep that one just as it is. I personally would cut the top off of the cave so the players don't need dark vision, and you could call it a canyon or a ravine or a gorge if you'd like. This also gives the harpies a little more of an advantage with their flight. Now the boss of Cragmaw Hideout is a bugbear, which is a CR1. You could easily replace that bugbear with a siren from the Theros book, which uses the exact same stat block as a regular harpy from the monster manual, and is also a CR1. Now the big change you might want to make in Cragmaw Hideout is those wolves at the beginning. I personally don't think it's too much of a stretch to have harpies using wolves, but that's up to you. What I do recommend, however, is that if you have a player that is a champion of Nalia, this would be a great opportunity for them to get piety points. You could put some helpless animal here and give the player the opportunity to release it to gain favor for Nalia. In my opinion, a Nyx Fleece Ram would be perfect for this. If you're unfamiliar, the Nyx Fleece Ram can be sheared and their fleece can be used to make magic items. I'd recommend that this ram already be sheared when the players get there and you give the siren a magic item from the Nyx Fleece Ram's table. And that's it for chapter one. What you've effectively done is changed all those goblins into harpies, that bugbear into a siren, and those wolves into a Nyx Fleece Ram. And just like that, you've got chapter one of Lost Minds of Theros. Chapter two is called Fandolin, and that will by far be the easiest to reskin. Just go through the list of NPCs and use some ancient Greece name generator. The halfling at Alderley Farm could be a Minotaur or a Satyr. And Sister Gariel at the Shrine of Luck could be a cleric of one of the Theros deities of your choice. Maybe a god that one of your players champions for. As far as the red brand thugs that are terrorizing Fandolin, you could change those to pretty much anything. They're just humans with short swords. But to keep it more Theros themed, I would recommend doing Returned. A Returned Drifter is a CR1 quarter and a Returned Sentry is a CR1. These are great replacements for the red brand ruffians. Now as far as the wizard that's running the red brands, you could make that a Returned Keiko Mantis. But keep in mind, that's a CR4. You may need to adjust it a little bit before your party can take it on. Now, as far as the skeletons in the crypt, you can keep those right where they are. If you want to use a Theros creature, though, Anvil Rot Raptors, I think, fit right there as well. Now, as far as that Nothic in the basement, because you're using Returned, this would be a great place to put an Eidolon. You could even hint at the upcoming boss by making this the Eidolon of the Returned Keiko Mantis. And real quick, for those of you that don't know, a Returned is someone who has come back from the Underworld, hence the name Returned. Unfortunately, they've lost their identity, which has manifested itself as an Eidolon somewhere else. So the returned Keiko Mantis's identity could be the Eidolon that you put in the cave to replace the Nothic. But that's if you really want to flesh out this boss. You are going to have to come up with some kind of backstory if you decide to go this route. This dungeon also has a couple bugbears and a goblin, 
Again, you can use harpies and sirens here. That's just fine. Or whatever you decided to use in the previous chapter. Chapter three is called the spider's web. And you can have a lot of fun reskinning this part. Agatha is a banshee in the middle of the woods. If the party decides to fight her, she runs away never to be heard from again. If the party role plays with her and pleases her, she gives them valuable information to the plot. This is the perfect spot to put a sphinx, except no substitute, a sphinx belongs here. As for the necromancer at Old Owlwell with the Horde of Undead, I would replace him with an artificer of the god Perforos. And you can replace those zombies with anvil rot raptors or bronze sables or any other construct you'd like to put in there. As for the orcs at Wyvern Tor, you could use nymphs, or you could just replace the orcs with one of the Theros races and then replace the racials. So for example, if you want to use minotaurs, you could just use the orc stat block, but give them the minotaur charge and gore. Or if you want to use Leonin, you can make use the orc stat block and give them the roar. Now, Thunder Tree would be a great place to put nymphs, especially Lampads. The druid you could replace with a satyr or a centaur, and the dragon venom fang you can keep, but make him red or blue to fit Theros. As for Cragmaw Castle, again, you're replacing the goblins and the bugbears with harpies. And a great boss for Cragmaw Castle, maybe a little strong, would be Ephemia. Ephemia is a CR5 Nyxborn harpy, and she fits perfectly here as the leader of the harpies that have been terrorizing your campaign. As far as the owlbear that's locked up in the tower, you could replace that with a fleece mane lion. And the grick on the ceiling could be a bronze sable. Now the final chapter, Wave Echo Cave, you can replace Wave Echo Cave with pretty much any significant location in Theros that you that you like. And the big bad evil guy, you can pretty much swap out with anything. Now Neznar the Black Spider is a drow spellcaster, but you could replace him with any of the other Theros races and still make it interesting. A Minotaur spellcaster would be a great and unique big bad evil guy for this Theros campaign. If you don't like the Minotaur wizard, you could also go with a straight up Theron Medusa as your big bad evil guy. But make sure you give little hints that they're, they're going to be fighting a Medusa and maybe put in some items to deal with petrification. And there you go. That should be enough to get you started at least reskinning your Lost Minds of Fandelver campaign to be more Theros-like. And if you'd like to see more of these, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Out of the Abyss could easily be an Underworld campaign and Ghost of Saltmarsh could be a Tardix River campaign. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what campaign you want to see reskin for Theros. And if you're a DM looking for players or players looking for a game, make sure you join the Discord. Link in the description. Come by, ask questions. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.